Hi, this is Larry with Apex Septic Design with another in our short series on how to maintain your septic system. Today we're going to talk about pressure distribution septic systems and how those have special considerations over gravity flow septic systems. Pressure distribution septic systems are constructed with small pipes in the drain filled area and are prone to clogging with sludge from the septic and pump tank when the pump runs. So we want to flush those laterals out to make sure that the sludge doesn't overload in the end of the pipe and cause hydraulic loading failure in other parts of the drain field. Let's go take a look at the pump control panel and start there. This is a typical pump control panel for a pressure distribution septic system. This one's made by the SJE Rhombus Corporation. Your panel may be different depending on what was specified in the septic design. Let's talk about the components that we see on the outside of the panel. This is the indicator light for a high water condition inside of your pump tank. If for some reason you have a high water condition, either you're using too much water or your pump's not working, this lamp should go off and there should also be a loud buzzer that accompanies that. Over on the side of the panel here is a test silence switch. If your buzzer does happen to go off, you can simply pull that switch forward and it will silence the buzzer, but the alarm lamp will still be lit indicating that there's a high water condition inside of the tank. Down here is the main power cutoff for both the panel and the pump itself. Now let's take a look inside of the panel. Depending on what was specified in your septic design, your panel configuration may vary both from the panel itself and manufacturer to manufacturer. Over here we have the pump timer count. This is the timer itself that controls the dose and the time between the dose, circuit breakers, control fuses, pump control switch, and spare fuse. Now let's talk about the switch itself and running your pump. When it comes time to flushing the laterals in the drain field, this is the switch that will run the pump. It's a three position manual switch with auto, off, and hand settings. Auto allows the timer to control the pump turning it on and off. Off prevents the pump from running and hand runs the pump manually. When it comes time to flush the laterals, depress the switch down to the hand position, you'll hear the pump contactor engage and run the pump until the laterals flush clear of any debris in the laterals. The pump will stay running as long as it's in the hand position, so as soon as the laterals are clean, move the switch back up to the off position and then again to the auto position to make sure that the pump runs as the timer is indicated. Now it's time to flush your drain field laterals. When you go to do that, locate the flushing port at the end of each lateral, pull the cap off of the port and pull the cap off of the drain field lateral itself and set that aside. Do this for each port that you have on your drain field. Now we're going to have our assistant turn the pump on and we're going to watch the drain field flush until it's clean. It's helpful to have an assistant when you're doing this so you don't have to run back and forth between the pump and the lateral watching it flush. It may take a minute or two for the effluent to get to the lateral depending on how far away the pump is. You can see the small bits coming out of the liquid here. You want to flush the lateral until it's relatively clean here. And that's about as good as it gets with a standard pressure distribution septic system. And that's all there is to flushing your drain field laterals. So once you're done flushing your drain field laterals, you want to be sure to put the end caps back on the pipes and place the cover back on top of the end of the lateral. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos and visit us at apexseptic.com.